and we are live. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm just going to wait for my software to show me whether I've actually got any viewers. God, I'm tired. Little puffy eyes. Great. Oh, one viewer. Say hello in the comments if you're with me so I know who's there and who's watching. Hello, Heather. Hi. <laughs> you might be the only one for now. Oh, hi, Tessa. Hey, good to see you, girl. Well, not seeing you, but good to sense your presence. <laughs> oh, there we go. Fiona, Jenny, Ryan, brilliant. Hello, everybody. That's great. Okay, right. Um, I'm just gonna start chatting a little bit um, sort of about myself and then um, I'm gonna get into the proper depths of it um, so that any latecomers don't miss anything important, you know, of the gospel truth that I'm gonna talk to you about. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about, oh, hello, Tom Sawyer about uh, who I am, why I'm doing this. Uh, if anybody has been um, part of the talks that I did yesterday about how to set yourself up with your home studio, you might already know all of this. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna just say it again for anybody who's new to this. Um, so my name's Leone, hello. I am a voiceover artist, actress, uh, singer, writer, teacher, um, all of the multi-hyphenations, um, and I have been working in voiceover for six years, and yeah, I kind of dropped into it sort of by accident while I was still in drama school, actually. I saw somebody looking for uh, German speakers, which I'm originally from Germany, and so I thought, oh, this is great, I'm going to apply, and I got the job, and it was something great that I could do kind of while tr still training. Um, and fitting it around my schedule, which was obviously brilliant. And then I just sort of treated it as a bit of a side hustle for a few years um, while obviously doing acting work, um, but also the kind of, you know, the day jobs that we do as actors, waitressing, promotion, um, you know, barista, that kind of stuff. And then about two and a half years ago, I think it was, that I decided to take it more seriously and to try and make it sort of my, my main income source because I was working in a cafe at the time. I was assistant manager and it was just really taking its toll on both my mental and physical health, uh, being up on my feet all day long and being just constantly tired and exhausted and not having the energy or the time to invest in my acting career uh, or the money. And so, yeah, just kind of one day to the next, I quit that job in the cafe and I said, right, I'm going to take this seriously now with the voiceovers. And I did tons and tons of research and tons and tons of networking and really, yeah, kind of went full steam ahead with that. And now two years later, I can say that I am um, making my living with voiceovers and that's amazing obviously because it means that I have a lot of time to invest in the other aspects of my career. I have the money to take classes and do workshops and you know um, develop my, my acting and singing. I have time to write, I have time to meet friends and chill out and yeah it's it's a really privileged position to be in when you can say that voiceover kind of is your day job as an actor so i did a talk like this a couple of weeks ago for a friend called daniel dresner who's a brilliant acting coach and he has set up a, a facebook group for actors called daniel dresner coaching actors should check it out if you don't know it and he's organizing now in lockdown loads and loads of seminars and talks and round tables with people about all different aspects of the industry and so I did a little talk for him 
about um yeah how to get into voiceover really because i know a lot of actors would like to work in voiceover but kind of it's a little bit daunting and it's a little bit overwhelming uh the wealth of information that is out there and kind of not really knowing where to start and so i thought i'd do a little talk on that and it was really well received and so i felt like um i might do it again and then all of that coincided with the black lives matter movement kind of um yeah uh boiling over as it has and i felt really sort of helpless and powerless in the whole situation of like well what, what can i do and so i thought i might try and raise some money for uh black lives matter charities by doing this talk again and um yeah so it's all obviously on a pay what you can pay what you want donation basis and everything that is being donated is going to go to black lives matter charities you can see my paypal link in the description below the video and i'll also paste it again later um yeah oh ryan the i'm just gonna put the name here daniel dresner dresner there you go daniel dresner it's his name um yeah that group daniel dresner coaching actors is really great loads and loads of brilliant webinars and talks and um seminars so yeah have a look at that um yeah so yesterday for anybody who was there i did a little chat about how to set yourself up um with your home studio if you missed it i'm gonna post the recordings of the videos on my youtube channel as well so you can watch it back if you want to um and so today what i'm going to talk about is how to actually find the work because obviously it can be a bit tricky to kind of understand really how the industry works and it's quite different from the acting industry really obviously as a, an actor who is working <clears throat> in a professional capacity in the industry you already have a lot of the skills that you need to also be a successful voiceover artist and there's just a few more things that you will need to top up your skill set with um you already know how to act hopefully which is great um you already know how to market yourself as a business you have probably got show reels and headshots and cvs and maybe a website and all of these things and you're just going to need to add the the voiceover skills to that portfolio that you already have you already have a professional uh, mindset, you already probably are self-employed, know how to invoice people, know how to chase unpaid invoices, all of these things um, are all things that you're going to have to know how to do as a voiceover artist, so really you're kind of already halfway there, which is great news. Um, and in this little talk I'm just going to talk about the bits that you're going to have to look at specifically when it comes to voiceover. So. I have prepared a little presentation for you guys. There you go. Which uh, I have also downloaded as a PDF and um, you can download it again beneath the video in the description. I've put the Google Drive link. So anything that I'm saying, um, yeah, you'll have the PDF and there's some learning resources and some links in the end of the presentation. So you can go and uh, do your own research and use this as a starting point, which this is really what this is. Like, obviously, everybody is different. Every voice is different. And you're going to just need to use this as sort of, um, yeah, a basis to go from and then go and do your own research, go and do your own work and find sort of what works best for you. But this is just a little, um, yeah, kind of 101, as it says, of where to get started and how to kind of set yourself up. Um, obviously, all of this is my experience. It's my opinions. You will probably hear and see um, contradicting information when you go and do your own research, which is normal. But again, you know, just see what works for yourself. So. I get a lot of actor friends who, when they hear that I do voiceovers, who say, oh, wow, I want to do voiceovers. Like, obviously, it's a very uh, attractive industry. 
And again, because we already kind of have half of the skills that we need, it's quite easy for us to get into. It's also quite easy for anybody to get into. It's become very accessible sort of because people are able to just buy a good broadcast quality microphone, set up a home studio, and then they say, wow, now I'm a voiceover artist. And obviously that means that there is a lot of competition in the market, but there's also a very thin layer of sort of the top people who actually know what they're doing and you want to be in that thin layer at the top really um so this is yeah just a little bit of guidance of how to get to that thin layer at the top <laughs> um so really the the most important thing when you say i want to get into voiceover is well what is it you want to do because the voiceover industry is massive there's tons and tons and tons of different areas and niches and you might have been told that you have a pleasant speaking voice or you might like to play around with character voices or you know um you have a great sort of trailer voice or whatever and so you say okay right i'm gonna get into voiceover so really the first thing to understand is the the voiceover industry you need to know what is part of the voiceover industry so these are i'm going to make myself a little smaller so you can see this properly there you go these are just uh kind of the most important parts of the voiceover industry that i just wrote down kind of off the top of my head so that you can see there's tons and tons of different areas and niches and you really need to know what each of these niches are and which one not only you would like to do but also which one you fit into so like obviously i'm always going to talk about myself and my experience like for example i work a lot in explainer videos i do a lot of those just because i have a fairly um sort of conversational young and uh like relatable tone to my voice and you know all these explainer videos of like this is Sophie Sophie is the uh, marketing manager in a big international company she has an issue with this so she asks her friend about the solution and she finds this blah 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 you know that's the kind of like explainer video type thing um that I do a lot of I also do a lot of children's content because my voice is generally quite young. I do a lot of sort of um, kids character voices. So I work a lot with YouTube channels who produce kids content, nursery rhymes, uh, fairy tale videos, uh, how to make a caterpillar out of Play-Doh videos, all this kind of stuff I do a lot of. And then ADR, uh, um, IVR, which is sort of the um, uh, interactive voice response. So uh, like you call a company and they say, uh, for English, please press one. For German, please press two. For French, please press three. And then you go through the whole, you know, um, the whole menu like that. I do a lot of that because I'm fluent in German, French and English. So that's a niche that I fit really well into because these are usually the three languages that are being used for that kind of stuff now those are jobs that aren't particularly fun but they are very regular i work with a company who um produces um kind of voicemail messages for for bigger companies and they hire me to do the voice for them so in that sense it's really important to sort of have a look at what the different parts of the voiceover industry are and where you see yourself fitting, not only what you would like to do, but also again, what your particular skill set, your particular voice is suited for. And in that sense, then it's really important to know your voice. So you need to know your voice age. Your voice age will be very different from your playing age as an actor. It will probably be a bigger, um, uh, a bigger bracket so as a playing age as an actress I've got like 22 to 30 let's say my voice age is children to 30 mid 30s because I sound much younger than I look and I can sound even younger you know when I do like children's voices and cartoon voices this is how I sound so 
you need to kind of have a listen to yourself, maybe even ask friends that know you what they would say your voice age is. And then again, with that decision, you can then see where you fit. For example, if you look at um, corporate kind of medical narration or e-learning for banks and uh, and insurance companies, they will probably want to go with quite a, a gravitas kind of um, serious voice. So I know that I'm not going to do that because my voice is too young and too kind of fresh for that kind of thing. So I'm not even going to try and, and fit into that bracket because I know that's just not where I'm going to be working in. So listen to your voice, have other people listen to your voice and try and define what your voice age is. Also, your tone and character. That goes into what I just said about, um, you know, you sound fresh, you sound young, you sound uh, sincere, relatable. Um, anybody who is on Spotlight will have seen these like odd voice character brackets that you can put on your Spotlight CV, which I personally find a bit weird on an acting CV. Um, especially if you have like a show reel on there, like surely people can hear what you sound like. But for yourself as a voiceover artist, it's important to know the character of your voice. Are you a little bit raspy? Are you breathy? Are you high pitched? Are you low pitched? Are you, um, do you have a posh accent or do you sound urban? All these things are important to understand about your voice and I mean your voice obviously we can all do accents we can all do character voices but your voice just as you normally speak you need to be able to characterize and then sort of categorize because that then gives you an information about the suitability for different areas of the industry so obviously I have been working in this industry for a few years so I can say things like okay so I know that my voice suits this and suits this and doesn't suit this so for you it's gonna have to be a, a bit of research go and go on YouTube and have a listen to different um, commercials for different brands different e-learning uh, tutorials um, medical narration promos explainer videos all of these things have a listen and listen what kind of voices they tend to use Obviously, there will always be out of the box and there will always be companies that kind of go against the, the usual. But in general, they will be all quite similar. You will be able to sort of spot a pattern and then say, oh, my voice is similar to that. So I can work in this kind of field. That's interesting. OK. And then you will find kind of maybe a handful of, of areas that you think you can work in. When it comes to commercials, obviously, you will find absolutely everything. Um, commercials are, yeah, basically the way that your voice will fit into commercials is you will have to have a think about what particular brands and sort of sectors you would be working in. Um, so I, again, with my voice, know that I'm probably not going to be voicing a commercial for a car or a perfume, you know, where they have like deep kind of sensual voices that do that kind of work. I would be working in um, tourism, skincare, uh, clothes, children's stuff. Again, like it, it kind of gets recurring where you know, okay, well, I work for children's content in this area, so I'll probably also work for children's content in this area. So again, go out, listen to things, uh, compare what your voice does to what you can hear and then yeah understand where you fit within the industry strengths and weaknesses really important um, especially when it comes to kind of again understanding where you fit in the industry like some people have trouble speaking in a kind of um, conversational manner and 
a lot of companies, especially when it comes to explainer videos or promotion videos, like the, the sort of, you know, oh, I'm just chatting to my friend, just telling them about this thing. You know the, um, oh, what commercial is that? I should have brought um, an example. There's like the, I think it's like the um, Apple or something. They're always like super conversational. It's just like, oh, this is, this is the new iPad and this is what it does. So that's the kind of, you know, that kind of tone that a lot of companies really like. And some people just don't really know how to do that. They just are very good at the proper commercial sounding type, you know, and that's great. So that's a strength that they have. But yeah, they might just not be very good at the com at the conversational reads. Exactly the other way around. Some people might be very good at conversational, but not very good at the high energy sort of hard sell commercials. Some people might be very good at character voices, but not very good at narration. Some people might be very good, you know, you get the point. Like, I'm not going to patronize you and go through all of the different areas, but you understand that you need to know what you're good at and what you're not good at. I've personally, um, I'm good at character voices and um, I'm a, a very good sight reader, which is very important for things like dubbing and ADR, where you go into a booth and you get your clip and then you have your, um, the, the, the text coming like as a, as a ticker below, like subtitles and you just have to do it. And if you're not a good sight reader and maybe if you're, dyslexic or you just aren't very good at reading something cold you know ADR might not be a good fit for you in the in the beginning obviously all of these things can be improved on and you can work on them but like to start yourself off maybe don't approach ADR companies if you know that your side reading isn't very strong um again so yeah listen to yourself and listen to others that's really the the key here you record yourself um, use practice scripts. You can find loads and loads of practice scripts online and just try things out and listen to yourself and, and be honest with yourself and be uh, nitpicky and say, oh, okay, well, this doesn't really sound like a commercial that I would hear on the radio. Why is that? How can I make it more commercial? Or, oh, this is a narration that of an audio book that I would really like to listen to. Um, so I'm going to go and find a paragraph of my favorite book and I'm going to read it and I'm going to listen back to it. And I say, oh, OK, this really sounds like an audiobook that I would get off Audible. OK, so clearly audiobooks might be something for me. So, yeah, you know, just basically play, play around, find what you enjoy doing, find what you think you're good at doing and you will be able to position yourself within the industry, because I think something that we are often tempted to do as actors as well is to say well i can do anything i'm versatile that's not necessarily the right way to go about it obviously yes versatility is a great thing but the more you kind of niche yourself and the more specific you get about your skill set the more hireable you really make yourself like yeah if you if you listen to somebody's voice reel and you can hear, okay, right, so they do the funny character voices and they do the the lovely sort of boy next door conversational read and they do the, the high energy commercial stuff. Great. I know exactly what kind of voice actor this person is and I know exactly what to hire them for. Whereas if you get a voice reel and somebody is doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of that, it's, yeah, it kind of muddies the waters a little bit and it can get a bit difficult to really know who that person is. So yeah, make sure that you find a few things that you're really good at and stick to those, if that makes sense. Obviously, always room for improvement and always uh, room to acquire more skills and broaden your body of work, of course. So microphone technique is probably the most important thing about working as a voiceover artist. If you have worked as a singer or with a microphone on a stage, you will already have some microphone technique, but it's really important if you haven't to understand what that means. So for example, how to avoid too much 
uh, popping and hissing and breathing out into the microphone and mouth noises, clicks, uh, how to breathe properly when you're doing a recording, all these things all fall under microphone technique. If you feel like you haven't got that, it's really important that you go and, and learn about it. There is um, there will be some learning resources later on in the presentation um, where you can go for, for that kind of thing, because that's probably the, the most important thing when you start working as a voiceover artist. If you go into uh, a job or an audition with one of the big companies and you don't have proper microphone technique, they're not gonna bother explaining to you how to use the microphone. They're just not gonna hire you. So that's really important. That's like the voiceover 101 to understand proper microphone technique. And then there's always mentoring. There are loads of uh, websites that offer sort of courses, online courses, and there's also one-on-one -on -one mentoring. Find somebody who is uh, in the voiceover industry, maybe a friend of yours who can, who can help you out. Um, might be a skill exchange or maybe you pay them. Uh, obviously, don't ever expect anybody to do any of those things for free. Um, but yeah, just go out and, and find somebody who can help you with that kind of thing. If you say, well, I would love to understand how to do character voices because I've always wanted to work in, in animation, but I don't really know how to properly create a character voice um, kind of from the ground up. Well, you can find mentoring on these kinds of things. Online courses, as I just said, there's tons and tons of them. Um, again, later in the presentation, uh, there are a few links of where you can find these things. Um, they are really helpful. They're really useful for you to learn and also just understand your voice and your setup a bit better. Practice scripts, as I've said before, there's loads and loads of those out there. Um, if you literally just type into Google voiceover practice scripts, you'll find tons and tons. Um, and also, I mean, you will have loads of them at home. You know, just find a book, find um, a, a leaflet that has been dropped into your letterbox, anything really that is in any way readable. Go and sit in your in your studio and read it out and then listen back and then try and improve. It's yeah, practice makes perfect is is in obviously always applicable in any field and definitely in this one as well. Subject specific training. This is a little bit more voiceover uh, specific really in this case, because yes, there is a difference between how to read an audio book or how to uh, voice a video game. And there is a difference between a soft sell and a hard sell commercial. And there is a difference between um, ADR character work and um, again, audio book character work. So all these things have specific little nuances. And if you want to work in a particular area of the industry, you're going to have to get specific training for those areas. And again, there's, you know, there's, there's resources out there for you to, to learn about those things. If your dream is to be on big games and, you know, voice for EA games or whatever, you need to go and, and listen to uh, game voiceovers and need to understand how they work and how, you know, you might be recording over the period of six months for a game. You need to know how to make a character consistent that when you go into the studio on day one for this particular character and you go into the studio on day 40 for this particular character, they sound the same and they are the same character. So these are all subject specific things that you need to consider and that you need to learn. And then <laughs> once you know all of these things, and obviously it's not uh, kind of you need to first become the perfect voiceover artist and then you can start working in the industry. Obviously, there is a little bit of learning on the job involved as well. Um, but then you, you need to know how to market yourself. So obviously the, the one kind of um, staple that you should have is a website. Uh, she says not having a website. <laughs> I, mine is in, under construction, but I have um, a SoundCloud. So all of my voiceover samples are on a SoundCloud. So if I have somebody interested in working with me, I can send them the link to my SoundCloud. I have it in my uh, email signature as well. So 
I do have all of my voice samples in one place. But obviously, having a website is is a good idea. So if you already have a website as an actor, add a voiceover tab to it and pop some some samples on it. And um, yeah, obviously that can only be helpful. Spotlight actually has recently added a few more uh, voiceover categories. So if you haven't updated your Spotlight in a while, it's quite interesting. If you have a look in the skills section, you can now select uh, if you have a home studio, which obviously at the moment with the lockdown and not a lot of um, studio, like outside studio work being done, it's quite important. If you have a home studio, go on Spotlight and select that you have have a home studio. Um, yeah, because, you know, some some casting directors go on to Spotlight and specifically search for people who do have that. So make sure that that's up to date. Twitter uh, is probably one of the most resourceful ways now to market yourself as a voiceover artist if you use um you know all the hashtags pop your your voice reels on there um network with other voiceover artists and casting directors on twitter i'm going to get to that kind of um a little bit later but definitely if you if you consider yourself a voiceover artist and you have a home studio set up make that visible on twitter put it in your bio or again, have like a, a pinned tweet or something about it. Um, because yeah, you need to market yourself wherever you can. LinkedIn is not something I ever used as an actor. I know that a lot of people do. Um, it was never something that kind of came to my, to my attention until I started working in voiceover. So there's tons and tons of voiceover artists on LinkedIn and also voiceover casting directors. So if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, set yourself up as a voiceover artist on LinkedIn. Instagram as well, always a, a good way, slash Facebook really, um, make a Facebook page, have your voiceover um, information on Instagram, a link in your bio to your SoundCloud or whatever. Uh, just be visible because I'm going to get to that in a minute, but so much work will come to you through recommendation and networking. So if you're visible as a voiceover artist, people will remember that and they will recommend you. I get it all of the time on Facebook and Twitter that um, some of my friends or some of my followers tag me in things. Somebody is looking for German voices and somebody will tag me, oh, Leone is a voiceover artist because I am making myself visible as a voiceover artist. Okay. Obviously, the ideal situation would be for people to come to you <laughs> because you are marketing yourself as a voiceover artist and people say, I need a voiceover artist, so I'm going to go to uh, Ryan Graham, the voiceover artist. Now, obviously, in the beginning, sadly, that's not how it's going to work. So at the start, you're going to have to go out and do the work and try and find the work. Uh, and there are loads and loads and loads of different resources Again, this is probably going to be quite similar to what I've just said about marketing yourself. But in order to also then go and find the work, LinkedIn is great because you have both companies who will use voiceover artists and you have casting directors on there. Loads and loads of voiceover casting directors that you can contact and send your materials to. And, you know, it's the same as with um, screen or stage casting directors. They might not have something for you right now but they will remember you, they will have you on file. And if something comes that you're right for, they might get in touch. With companies, I mean places like um, audio visual production companies, companies that produce commercials, that produce um, explainer videos, that produce um, voicemail messages, all this kind of stuff. If you contact them and send them your stuff, Again, they will have you on file and it's happened, yeah, a lot for me actually that I've contacted companies and they would just say, cool, thank you, uh, we'll put you in, in our roster of, of voiceover artists and then a few months later they get in touch and they say, hey, one of my clients likes your voice, do you want to voice this explainer video for them? So it's just important to reach out to those companies and yeah, make yourself known. Facebook, there are 
tons and tons of groups on Facebook for voiceover artists. Anybody who was there yesterday for my um, How to Set Yourself Up with your home studio webinar uh, will already know this. There are loads and loads of Facebook groups, um, British voiceovers, um, the professional British voiceover group, foreign voiceover professionals for anybody who isn't native English. Um, and then obviously, if you are not native English, there will also be groups in your native language. So I'm in loads of German voiceover groups. And if you are from Portugal, there will be groups for Portuguese voiceover artists. So make sure you join all of those groups and you're sort of semi-active in them because there will always be job posts in them. I've gotten a good amount of work from uh, people posting onto these voiceover groups saying, hi, I'm looking for a German voiceover or I'm looking for somebody who can do kids' voices. And um, yeah, just send them your stuff and hopefully you're gonna, you're gonna get the, the job. Uh, again, Twitter, same thing. The, the great thing with Twitter is that you can connect with people completely all over the world. So there is like a huge market for um, like indie games in Asia. I am connected with a, a load of casting directors from China, from Japan, from Korea, who are all working on um, indie games in, in these countries, and they are always, always, always looking for English speakers. Um, so yeah, it's like, find somebody who works in the industry, have a look at who they follow, who follows them, and just kind of do a little bit of a, you know, it's like the, the kind of spider web thing where you kind of start here and then you go there and you just find more and more people who are connected to this obviously hashtags on twitter you know voiceover voice acting all of these have a look through the hashtags and um you can create lists i don't know if if you know of this but on twitter you can create a list and add people to that list and then you can just look through what the people on this particular list are talking about so if you make a voiceover list and just add all the people related to voiceover casting, voiceover production, uh, indie game companies, all of these kinds of people, just add them to a list and just once a day have a flick through and see there will be job posts on there. Loads and loads of companies and casting directors will post directly on Twitter saying, hi, we're casting for this new indie game. Um, please send us your samples. So again, yes, it's a little bit of work, but you will hopefully at some point build up a bit of a, a roster of faithful clients, which is something I'm also going to talk, out, talk about in a bit. Um, voiceover databases are kind of a new phenomenon that has sort of cropped up in the past few years where there's websites where you as a voiceover artist can just go and upload your stuff and then clients can flick through that and uh, can book you through those websites. So one of them that I work with quite a lot is called Vokwind, which is also going to be in the links later on in the presentation. Another one is Speak Online. Um, and yeah, if you just have a Google for voiceover databases, it's a, it's sort of in between an agent and a pay to play website because you're not you're not paying to be on their books. They definitely take a cut from when a client actually books you. But it's kind of the, the least input from you necessary because you just go and set up your profile you upload your samples and then um and then you just wait <laughs> and i think I, I probably must have come across vokwind through twitter or facebook probably saw an ad and was like oh yeah sure I'll, I'll upload my stuff and then i completely forgot about it and then a couple of months later suddenly i got an email saying hey uh, our client likes your voice um can you record this job for us and since then i've recorded quite a lot with vokwind actually and um yeah, so these are interesting websites to have a look at and um, and just kind of, yeah, find find a few of them, upload your stuff and, and just see what comes of it. Networking, the dreaded N-word. None of us like it, but it's so important to connect with fellow voiceover artists, with, again, as I said, cast and directors and companies. Um, so many jobs I've gotten have been through other people, um, other voiceover artists who were asked to do a job and couldn't do it for whatever reason and said, oh, but I've got my friend Leonie who can do it, um, 
people who have voiced something in a particular language and then they ask, oh, um, do you also need a German speaker? I've got Leonie who can do this for you. So probably, yeah, a good, I want to say 30% of my clients I've gotten through recommendations from other people. So make sure, again, that you put yourself out there as a voiceover artist, that your friends and, and kind of professional contacts know that you do voiceovers and um yeah, and try and work off recommendations and obviously also return the favor. I always, always try to get my friends in with the clients that I work with because um, most of the people that I know wouldn't necessarily be like um, competition for me. Um, that sounds really arrogant. That's not how I mean it. Like, obviously, I just mean like they are based in a different kind of um, voice type, voice age, gender you know that kind of thing so i always recommend my friends to to my faithful clients um yeah because it that's really how how you can establish yourself a bit more in the industry clients are more important than jobs uh it is obviously great to book one job but you really want for that client to come back to you and that's how i now make a living from this i don't have that many new clients every month yeah there will always be a few new people popping in for the odd um voicemail message or the odd explainer video but the bulk of my income comes from a handful of faithful clients who come back to me every month every week and who just constantly bring me work and that's really what you need to focus on your your relationship with your clients and to make sure that they want to book you again and again and again um yeah so make sure that you you build up a, a friendly and good working relationship with your clients if that means that sometimes you know you might need to do them a bit of a favor or maybe go a little bit above and beyond uh, of what they were asking for you know you're all smart people like sometimes you need to kind of weigh up the pros and cons and, and know um, how you can make sure that that client comes back to you. Then there's agents, of course. Um, these are just a few kind of that popped into my head um, when I was putting this presentation together. Obviously, there's hundreds and hundreds of voiceover agents. I personally get probably about 10% of my work from agents. Most of my work I get from myself. The work I do get from my agents are uh, is usually the kind of bigger jobs, the bigger clients, the better paid work, but they come very sporadically. Um, I get a job from my agent maybe, I don't know, every three months, but I get work from my clients that I have found myself, yeah, every week. So agents are definitely a good thing but they're not the be all and end all. It's not like in the vo in the acting in industry where um, without an agent, basically, you know, it's really, really hard to work. Um, in the voiceover industry, you can work completely without an agent, but obviously having one is great. So the way to go about it, I would say, is to start off by yourself, uh, get a few good credits in, get some 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 work under your belt, and then approach agents and say, hey, I've been doing this for a while now and I would like to take my career to the next level. Uh, here is my material. Um, I would love to work with you because... So again, this is the same thing as when you message um, an acting agent. Don't send out a standard template bulk email to 50 different agents and expect to hear back. Make sure that you know this particular agency. Make sure that you've looked through the voices that they have on their website and that there isn't anybody like you. You really, in order to get an agent, you really have to have a USP and find what may, what sets you apart from the other people. Um, it will be difficult, there's no doubt about it. It can be really, really disheartening to try and find a voice agent because they are absolutely inundated with people wanting representation. Because, as I said earlier, it's become so easy to set up a home studio and say, I'm now a voiceover artist. And so loads and loads of people just record stuff at, in their home and send it off to agents and they are inundated with voice samples. Um, and yeah, you probably won't hear back from a lot of them. 
And if you hear back, it will probably often be a thanks, but no thanks. But obviously that doesn't mean you shouldn't try and you can't try, but you really have to try and find the reason why they want you on their books. So again, listen to the voice reels on their website and say, oh, I've noticed that you don't have a voice like mine. And here is the reason why you want a voice like mine, because I do this really well and I work with this really well and, you know, et cetera. All of these things that you basically know from messaging um, acting agents as well. Now, I say my agents because there's an interesting thing that is going on where non-British Engl uh, English native speakers for some reason can have more than one agent. Now, usually if you are uh, an English native, you will sign with one agent exclusively. But for somebody who speaks multiple languages, um, they tend to sign you inexclusively. I don't know why that is. But it's obviously great news for people who are um, non-English natives. Just go and try and get as many agents as you can, really. I'm currently signed with three, um, Voice Squad, Chatterbox, and Voice Archive, which isn't on here. Um, but I, yeah, I could if I wanted to just go and, and try and get even more, which at the moment I don't really need, if that makes sense, but I probably will at some point. Um, and also, when you want to approach agents, what you really need is a proper voice reel, which obviously at the moment is difficult because you're not allowed to go into a studio and get one done. So that's also a reason why I would recommend to wait while you don't have a proper voice reel. Um, if at the moment all you can do is record samples at your home, don't bother sending that to an agent. They, yeah, there is a, a little bit of... I don't want to call it snobbery, but there is something that if if it's not a professionally produced voice reel, they're not going to bother. So make sure that if you want to go and approach agents, it is with a proper voice reel. I'm going to talk about voice reels in a minute as well. But obviously, at the moment, it's difficult for any of us to get a voice reel done. So, um, so yeah, right now, just try and get a little bit of work in through the... the um, channels that I was talking about before. And then there are pay to play websites. There are very, very conflicting opinions about pay to play websites in the industry. Obviously, pay to play means uh, you pay for a membership, uh, clients post jobs on those websites, and you audition for them. And then if you're lucky, you book the job. There are loads of them. A lot of people don't like them because they don't feel like you should have to pay. Also, a lot of people don't like auditioning, especially because sometimes you will have to audition a lot and, you know, maybe just get one job out of 50 auditions. So it really is completely up to you um, whether you want to do it, whether you have the money to spare. I mean, obviously, it's all tax deductible. So if you need to get some more expenses, that's uh, that's always a good way to do it. I personally am only subscribed to bodalgo.com. Uh, I really like it and it has a really good um, reputa reputation reputation in the industry. It's run by a German guy called Armin Hirschstetter who vets every single talent that wants to sign up to his website. Other places like voices.com, for example, anybody can sign up. So there's huge, huge amounts of people on there and the competition uh, over one job is going to be massive. So bodago.com vets every talent that wants to sign up to make sure that they are up to the task and their recording quality is good enough. Um, the jobs that come on there are quite well paid usually. Um, I think they start at around 200 quid and then they go up to, I mean, however much. If it's a national commercial, it will be a few thousand. But um, yeah, I've gotten a few jobs from Bodalgo. I think the monthly fee is £25. And if you book one nice job every three or four months, you know, you got that back. So that was terrible math. But anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, usually the good thing with voiceover, obviously, it pays quite well. So any of these investments into the pay to play websites or um, learning resources, you'll probably get that back. Voice123 is another one that comes up a lot, which I haven't worked with, but tends to be um, 
fairly decent and reliable. Voices.com, a lot of people um, recommend not to. So that's all I can say. I have no experience with it, but if you go onto the Facebook groups and have a search for Voices.com, usually a lot of people tell you to stay away from it. And then there's Mandy. Obviously, all of us know Mandy, formerly Casting Call Pro, as an actor. There's also Mandy Voices. Again, have a look at what kind of jobs come through and make a decision um, about whether or not you want to subscribe to it. Um, most of those, the subscriptions are on a monthly basis. So what I do with Bodalgo, for example, when I know that I'm going to have a really busy, busy couple of months coming up and I'm not going to find the time to audition for any jobs on there, I cancel my subscription. And then when I know, oh, I've got a bit of time coming up again in the next couple of months, like at the moment, you know, I'm sat at home all day. Uh, so I've got time to audition for these things. I sign up to Bodalgo again. And, you know, if I if I get a job from it, great. So pay to play websites, very kind of, you know, um, yeah, they, they can be quite a controversial thing in the industry, but it's really up to you whether you want to give that a shot or not. Oh, I've got a lot of questions from Heather here. I'm going to just have a quick look at that. How would you recommend sending agents the voice reel by sending the individual clips on an email or should I add them all to a SoundCloud link and should you send them to your spotlight? So should you send them your spotlight link to? Yes. So uh, don't send them. This away again. Uh, don't send them the physical files because they're just going to clog up their uh, inbox. Put them somewhere on a SoundCloud or in a Dropbox or on your Google Drive or something and send them a link so they can listen to them. Um, usually you wouldn't send them like the individual clips, but like a mega mix of you know, this is my commercial reel, this is my character reel, this is my gaming reel, um, the, the like kind of, uh, yeah, individual ones would just, yeah, they probably wouldn't even bother listening to them. So yeah, kind of make these these mega mixes, which if you go and get a professional voice reel done is what they will mix for you anyway. Um, and should you send them your spotlight link to? If there's anything voiceover related on your spotlight, sure. Obviously you can upload your voice reel to your spotlight as well, which you should absolutely do. Um, you can obviously upload video and audio. So in the audio section, upload your voice reel. Um, if you have some voiceover credits or on your spotlight, sure. It's always a good way to show them that you have worked in the industry before. If there isn't really anything voiceover related on there, I don't know whether that's going to make much of a difference. Obviously, it can't hurt. You know, they might want to have a look at what you've done acting wise, um, what you sound like in your show reel, etc. So it can't hurt. Yeah, send them your show, your spotlight. Why not? <laughs> okay. Um, and then what have I got next? Oh yeah, knowing the industry rates is also really, really important. So when you start working with clients, you need to know what to charge them because um, obviously that's going to be quite different to acting where usually you know you will get a job offer and they will tell you, okay, this is what we're going to charge you and then uh, what we're going to pay you. And then your agent does the negotiations. In this case, if you're not working through your agent, you're going to have to do the negotiations. And it's super important to know your worth and to not let people um, kind of, you know, uh, push down your prices. So Gravy for the Brain is a, is a really great voiceover website with tons and tons and tons of uh, resources, learning resources, webinars, seminars, all of these things. And they have a brilliant rate card on their website. Uh, which you can just click, okay, this is a corporate, this is for internet use only, and then it will tell you kind of the going rates. Um, so that's really important. Obviously, it can be a little bit on a case-to-case -case basis. I kind of tend to decide the rates depending on the client sometimes. If it's like a small startup somewhere, you know, just wanting a video for their new Instagram channel, I'm probably not going to charge them the full fees. Sometimes you just have to kind of see, um, you know, what the client can afford. But if it's a big kind of international corporation and they try to, you know, fob you off with 250 quid, you're going to be like, no guys, you're going to have to pay me the full fee. So it's just, again, a question of understanding the industry, understanding the rates and, and yeah, kind of working accordingly. 
demo reels um really quick just on that because obviously at the moment that's not really something you can do but once you get out of lockdown and we can actually try and get onto that again um here are just a few companies that i would recommend that produce really really good demo reels uh crying out loud voice over kickstart sonic pond and voice over soho they are kind of the ones that tend to come up um every time you ask for recommendations of who you should go with um demo reels aren't cheap again it's an investment um you will probably start at around 300 pound and it can go up to whatever a grand but um they are they are worth it and you have to again put in the work you have to know what areas do i want to work in and what am i going to put on my demo reel um i personally for example i'm not particularly interested in audiobooks so i haven't got an audiobook sample on my demo reel because you know why would i so again it's that thing that i was saying earlier know the industry know your voice understand where you can and want to work and then tailor your demo reel accordingly uh, because they won't do that for you. You really have to bring in the material uh, that you that you want to record and they will tweak it with you and they will direct you and they will give you suggestions, but you need to come in with an idea of what you want to do. Uh, listen, 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 yes. <laughs> so again, go onto the kind of top voiceover agent websites uh, and have a listen to people's voice reels and understand how they work and what you think is a good voice reel and then um yeah uh conceptualize yours accordingly so learning resources as i've just said gra gravy for the brain is a massive one i'm just going to make this a little bit bigger again uh gravy for the brain is a website founded by um uh hugh edwards and peter dixon and it's it's amazing. It's like the be all and end all for anybody who wants to understand uh, more about the voiceover industry. It's full of resources and blogs and training and a mentoring forum. I think it's about £35 for the subscription. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely worth it. Everything is on there that you could ever need. Voiceover Kickstart run by Guy Michaels is also a really good resource. He also runs online courses. The voiceover network also a really good website they run like uh, webinars with industry people uh, on the voiceover hour that's how i got in touch with one of my agents actually camilla from chatterbox voices she was on one of those webinars which i saw and then i emailed her afterwards and said thank you so much this was a great webinar really interesting blah blah, blah. and then she ended up signing me so all of these things are great and obviously facebook youtube and blogs are full and full and full of information so you can really go and kind of do your own research and um, learn more about this industry that you want to get into uh, here are just a few links um, that you can have a look at so gravy for the brain obviously voice of the kickstart voquent and speak online are two of the voiceover databases that i was mentioning where you can just upload your material and um and then hopefully get some jobs and budalgo.com is one of the pay-to-play websites that I would recommend. Um, as I said, this presentation is downloadable down in the comments, uh, in the in the description. And uh, wow, I've talked for an hour now. I was worried that this wasn't going to be long enough, but sorry, I've been rambling on. Um, I'm just going to, this is going to be cringy, but sorry, I'm just going to remind everybody <laughs> that this is a uh, pay to play, pay to play, it's a uh, pay what you can, pay what you want basis, and all of the donations are going to go to Black Lives Matter charities, so I would appreciate if um, you could chip in a couple of quid, um, and yeah, are there any more questions? If you pop the questions in the comments, then I can do my best to answer them. I'm also just gonna give you my email address. So in case you have any other questions that you didn't think of, or um, you want some advice in the future um, about whatever, you know, just drop me an email. I'm happy to help as, as much as I can. Because all of these, I mean, all of this is like, is, is my experience, obviously, is my research. I've 
kind of yeah it's taken me six years to get to this point where I can say okay I'm I'm an established voiceover artist and I can still go so much further you know like I haven't voiced like a national commercial or anything like all of these things are still very far in the future but I I, I can say that I am making a living from it and I'm just happy to kind of pass on the knowledge and, and help people um because I know that it can be quite daunting and quite overwhelming um yeah so oh thank you heather i'm glad you enjoyed this and found it helpful so if there aren't any more questions then i guess i can i'm gonna end this broadcast so thank you so much for joining me um i'm gonna do the same talk again on friday evening tomorrow at seven for anybody who wasn't able to be here now and um yeah as i said drop me an email if you have any questions or message me on Twitter and uh, good luck with your voiceover careers. <laughs> okay, bye everybody!